All right, we're live. Yes, this is the live stream you want to be on, or if you're watching the replay, you want to be on this right now. We're talking about business credit with no personal guarantee. We don't sleep. I don't sleep, okay? We're not going to sleep on these bureaus. You're going to get these negative, nasty, erroneous items off. We're also going to get business credit in your business name with no personal guarantee. I got the steps to do it. It's coming up, and I'm just waiting for a few people to come on in. The subscribe tribe regulars, we've got different vendors you can use, the steps that you need to take, registering with the SOS in your state, getting things squared away in the LLC or the S Corp's name. We're going to get into all of this right now. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I don't sleep on this. I don't know who they're playing with. Also, I'm going to put it in my email right now. Okay. And thank you for coming in. I appreciate you saying hello. Hi, how are you? Thank you. I'm going to put my email in right now because I'm going to get pumped up. I'm going to get excited to share this information on how you can build business credit with no personal guarantee. And I want to make sure that you have my email. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can email me about your credit repair, about your business credit. If you got questions that maybe are in the live chat here that I might miss or whatnot, because we get rock and rolling on things, you've got my email. It's right there, okay? I'm also going to put in a website here, ALG Business, all right? ALG Business Credit, okay? Get with us. We can help you obtain your business credit goals, whether it's business credit with no personal guarantee and a business credit builder or a business credit funding. And this is the stuff that we're talking about today. So uh, this is a good question. How can I, re can I establish reinstated an inactive business established 10 years ago? Your secretary of state, whenever it was registered, if it went inactive, you can contact them and have uh, figure out what they want you to do to uh, reactivate it. Okay. So let's talk about it. Business credit, no personal guarantee. And uh, yes, we have vendors and trade lines and um, business credit with no personal guarantee in our business as we speak. So it is possible for you as well. All right. So let's get into it. Hold on. All right. First and foremost, you have to have an entity, right? And you have to have that entity registered with your secretary of state in your state, SOS registration, okay? So the SOS registration is the first step in getting your company squared away, whether it's an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, any of these natures, okay? Any of this that you need is... Um, going to be registered with the secretary of state. You want to make sure that you've got your LLC, your S corp, your C corps. You got your limited liability companies, your limited partnerships, your limited stuff, your corporations that limit your liability. You see that limit your liability, you limit, limit, limit your liability. It's the same thing with your uh, credit. You're building your credit separately from your personal stuff, your personal score and all that's good stuff. So it's the same thing with the business. You got to now see, here's the thing. People are like, hey, can you do a sole prop and sole proprietorship? And that's not recommended. You don't want to be going the sole prop, prop route, uh, sole proprietorship. You want to make sure that everything is in a company or corporation's name so you can make sure that everything stays uh, away from your own personal assets. So number one would be that SOS registration, getting things squared away. Yama Kruth, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right. Yes, you can send out your second round of letters. Absolutely. Also, um, it's a very unique situation, I suppose. You can email me as well. Yes. Make sure you have my email here. Okay. Um, I think I know who that super chat is from. Yep, businessman. I knew it. How clean does my profile have to be for applying for business credit? Hey, if you're applying with no personal guarantee, your business credit profile is the one that needs to be squared away and solid and all that good stuff, right? Okay. If you're doing funding with a personal guarantee, you're looking about 650 credit score, okay? Somewhere in there. So as long as you don't have a ton of hard inquiries, that's the big thing, okay? The big thing is the hard inquiries. Uh, and you're looking solid with uh, no real negative items, you know, um, no real late payments, that kind of stuff. You got a 650, you're good to go. All right, businessman. Uh, but if you want no personal guarantee and you've registered, like we talked about, first step registering with the SOS and getting your business entity rocking and rolling, then it is possible for you to go to the next step and get that federal 
employer identification number, the FEIN. That EIN number, okay, that EIN number is registered in the business's name, your LLC, your S Corp, your C Corp, whatever it's going to be, okay? This LLC, this limited company, this limited partnership, whatever it is, protecting your assets, it's registered to that and that alone. The EIN is kind of your social security number for your business, okay? So now you got a business entity, you got an EIN social. Now, why do you need the EIN? Because you need to get a business bank account, okay? A business bank account is very important. You would think, hey, you know, Brandon, I got my SOS, you know, Secretary of State. I got my stuff registered, my articles of organization or, or articles of incorporation squared away. I got the EIN. You know, brother, I don't really need to worry about this business bank account right this second because I'm going to do a few other things. No, no, no. You don't want to go grab your business uh, address and all that stuff. You want to get the business bank account right out of the gate. This is my recommendation. Okay. You can do what you want. But your company's inception date, even though it will say something for Secretary of State that's different, that bank account is really what people and banks and credit card companies and vendors and all these trade lines are going to be looking at. Merchant processing, that's what they're going to be looking at. There's business bank account date because they're going to probably ask you for business bank account statements. So if you need to get merchant processing through like, you know, a bank or Square or something like this or whatever, they're probably... You know, and this is goes above and beyond the normal just uh, things out there, you know, like the normal things that you can take payment for. We're talking about merchant processing that gives you better rates and you save more of your money, right? When you're taking credit cards, gives you better rates, gives you better ability. You might be in different uh, fields where certain payment processors are not utilized. And you're going to have to get specific payment processors for. So they're going to look at your bank accounts. Same thing with certain vendors. I remember that they would want to see, hey, we want to see the last three bank statements just to know that you are actually in business and that you could potentially pay this stuff back. So the bank account is very important because then you'll start generating bank statements from the get go, right? All right. So, um, Cakeology, I'll look into that. Yeah, I have not. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. All right. Do fixing my credit. Finally in the house, riding out, doing Dorian, riding out Dorian, fixing my credit. So I'm happy, I'm gonna help my mom fix her credit. Awesome, happy Saturday, Brandon. Happy Saturday to you as well. Enjoy your holiday weekend as well. This is great, I'm glad we're getting together on a holiday weekend, thank you so much, all right, for being here. Now, thank you very much for the super chat. Can I start a new business while a reinstating inactive for profit company? They can be separate companies, right? New Jersey love. Yeah. So thank you very much for the super chat. What are the requirements to start a nonprofit business? Well, nonprofits like uh, one of the nonprofit, not for profit are different. So 501s and 503s, I think they're different. Uh, you would have to look at the specific, you would want to talk to your lawyers or tax people to find out the specific needs to have a nonprofit business. But yes, you could have that. And as long as you have, uh, the, the interesting thing about nonprofits is there are no owners of nonprofits. I think they're only directors. So um, if you're a for-profit entity or you wanna own a company, you would probably be a for-profit entity. Can I start a new business while a reinstating an inactive one? Yeah, you can own as many businesses as you registered, right? So I mean, you can have boom, boom, boom. You can have two, three businesses of what you want. Uh, but if you're asking something specific, like I want to start a new business and then I want to have that business be the same business that, that's reinstated, that's a much different concept. So um, either you would want to start fresh or keep that business going. It's up to you. All right. So we've registered with the SOS. You got the EIN number, got your business bank account. Now, you're looking at professional email address, professional domain, professional website, this kind of stuff. I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Brandon, come on, man. I'm trying to get these vendors, these check because these vendors are going to be checking. They're going to be checking for email. And you look a lot better and much more credible when you have an email that's attached to your business in a domain, okay? Rather than just an email that says uh, Gmail, not Gmail, right? You actually have your domain email, all right? So, this is all wonderful. Have the website if you can, you know, put one up quickly because they or whatever is good for you. Put a website up because they're gonna check into this. They want to see you have a website that you have a business phone number. Okay, that would be nice. 
A lot of places need to have a toll-free and a local number. Now, a business phone number needs to, again, be separate for the business, not your personal numbers, not personal sales, business number, okay? I heard only LLCs are allowed to write off miles. Is this true? Um, so as far as your tax, right, questions, yeah, uh, you would want to ask a tax professional. However, however, from what I hear, there are uh, corporations that can write, that can use uh, business travel miles, uh, business uh, travel, okay? Business travel can include potentially, and again, talk to your accounts, but gas, mileage, um, flights, hotels, uh, all sorts of travel things, travel insurances, um, all sorts of stuff, okay? How long does it take an LLC to convert to a C Corp? I think the election for that, okay, uh, is pretty quick. You can get an LLC and you put the election in and I think you have to put in the election for a C Corp or an S Corporation within a couple of months. So you wanna double check on that. And if you miss that date, you're gonna have to wait a certain period of time to do it. Um, that conversion is quick. I think as soon as you put it in, uh, you get something back in the mail probably in 30, 60 days and they say they've accepted it. You'll get something from the federal government that says, oh, we accepted it. You'll now be taxed as a C Corp or an S Corp, whatever it is that you want, okay? You think I should get a virtual office address or an office? That depends on your destiny. That depends on your needs and your requirements, okay? So uh, the next thing that we're talking about after business phone number is a business address. If you have the means for an office and need an actual office and want to get an actual office, then so be it, right? If you don't and you just need a virtual address, right, like one of these, what, WeWorks or Regis or one of these co-ops and shares or whatnot, then uh, you can do that, okay? Just don't get a, just don't try to use a PO box or UPS store uh, address as your business entity address. It will not look right. They will look into it. They will figure it out, okay? Thank you very much. Brandon is the real deal. I appreciate it. Uh, I was an ex paralegal at a former, another <laughs> company and I was tired of other people. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. So Brandon is the real deal. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, ah, this is interesting. Okay. So can a business credit card be open at the same time as opening business bank account without a personal guarantee or do you have to wait a few months? Okay, so we're going through the steps. SOS registration, EIN, business bank account, getting the business address, domain, website, that kind of stuff because vendors ask for it. Getting your phone number, okay? There's numbers you can get at 800 number and the local and toll free numbers. Uh, business address, okay? Get yourself listed into 411, right? Typically, that will happen naturally, but you can also do listyourself.net, which is quicker. Okay, we'll help you out, listyourself.net. It's free as well. Now, you're going through these steps so you can get your DUNS number, so you can get your profile going. That would be the next step. That allows you then to start applying for vendors and start building up your business credit and allowing you to get that, what uh, Ms. Harris is talking about, business credit card with no personal guarantee at some point, okay? So... Business address listed in 411, then you can get your Dunn's number. Now, Dunn and Bradstreet will allow you to get your Dunn's number. The Dunn's number is what a lot of times you'll be utilizing when you're applying for business credit, okay? Along with that EIN, okay? So the Dunn's number is very important. It'll open up your D and B profile. Now, Dunn and Bradstreet is up to you, okay? But they have their own things that they'll try to sell you, okay? They'll try to send you to build this business credit builder and all sorts of stuff. Okay, this isn't necessary. Okay, the Dunn's number you can get for free. You don't have to get all their other products and services. Now it's up to you, right? It's up to you. But ultimately, ultimately, you just need the number. So how do you monitor all this, Brandon, right? You've got all this stuff. We've got the, you know, accounts open. We got Dunn and Bradstreet. What do we do? Well, nav.com is actually pretty good for your monitoring, okay? They start out with a free membership as well, I believe. They have free memberships. And if you need something more premium, more of an investment for yourself, 
uh, you can do this. It's reasonable. You can look into it, but um, you'll be able to see, you know, Dun & Bradstreet, um, Experian. They even have some personal stuff on it. So you can see your personal stuff too. So you Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, they have um, FICO small business score. They've got the Equifax, they got TransUnion, and they got a lot of stuff. I'm looking at their site right now. So this type of information is paramount for you because you're going to have to be able to track your reports and they have a few things on there like you know try out this business card try that just make sure it works for you don't be you know just applying for things because they'll they're like kind of like you know soliciting you to you know trying to get things and whatnot yeah so don't worry about it. <laughs> latasha La, latasha harris says lol yes dnb had me on the phone for almost two hours trying to convince me to get their uh credit builder account i politely declined but good news is I'll have my number in five or seven days. See, there you go. That's why I love the subscribe shop coming in here every weekend because other people are going through what you're going through right now. DMB might ask you, try, oh, well, you need it and you got it. No, 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 just get, you can just get that free number. Now, nav.com, you can monitor your own stuff. You can build your own credit. You can look at this business credit stuff and you can also start looking at vendors, okay? So now you've got yourself set up. Now you've got yourself rock and rolling with all the entity numbers of the website, you know, the, the virtual office, if you needed a virtual office because you didn't need a full office. So what is next, right? The vendors. Well, what vendors can you utilize? One of the things that I've noticed that most companies need, of course, are computers. Um, New Egg Business has a Net30 that's pretty awesome. Uh, you got a lot of electronics business. They even have, you know, some people put in monitors or, or televisions into their offices so they can watch news or business related things, be able to put on conferences and um, what you call it, uh, seminars and stuff on their TV. So there's TVs on there. You can use an a Amazon, there's a BP. BP and Valera, if you need gas, everybody uses gas and travels and whatnot, right? Uh, Sam's Club, Quill, Granger, we use Quill, we use Pitney Bowes. Granger, you can get uh, first aid kits. And the idea here is usually you have to buy about a hundred bucks, I think, for it to start reporting and make sure that they report. Talk to them, make sure that they report. Now, getting the good paydex score, okay, basically means you need to pay your bills on time. Hard inquiries don't get factored into your inquiries, into your business, don't get factored into your paydex score. Do you pay on time? Okay. Do you pay on time? Pay on time, you get an 80. Okay. That is where you need to be. Okay. But where you would like to be, it, it goes from zero to 100. Where you'd like to be is 90, 100, right? Up there. So paying early is how you get up there. So above an 80, you want to pay early. Paying early, you get 190, somewhere in there. Pay on time, 80. Anything below that is going to be challenging. So you want to pay your bills, business bills on time, much like your regular bills. So you're building up your vendor accounts. You get five, six vendor accounts. You go to the store cards, okay? And then from there, you can get your cash cards that everybody wants to get, that this is what you're capable of doing, okay? Wayne, been using Beyond Committed package religiously and getting great results. 668 Experian, uh, 681 TransUnion, 681, all right? Nice, very good work. Excellent. So business credit with no personal guarantee. Absolutely. We can help you do this as well. If you're wondering about these steps and wondering, hey, you know, I'm not really sure I want to get my business credit with no personal guarantee. Put this ALG business credit in here and put my address, my email address in here if you have more questions or concerns. All right. All righty. Excellent. So you have some questions. You have credit repair questions. I've got answers for you. Let's get into them. And I apologize if I miss any here. I put my email address, put ways to get in touch with me, websites, emails, all this good stuff. I want to make sure that I get to all your questions here on the live chat. Okay.
Hi, Brian. I'm so excited to be here. I've been counting down. I just started three weeks ago and already my TransUnion score went from 492 to 600. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Excellent work. Which vendor lets you do electronic office equipment? New Egg Business. This seems to be very good for electronic business equipment. Tiger Direct happens to be really good. And um, let's see, Amazon Business. You could potentially do Staples. There's a lot of things. Two items removed in the business phone. There we go. Two items removed. They stopped process. My address. Ah, okay, cool. So, Barbara. So, this happens sometimes, okay? On oh, Barbara, also asks, do I have to sign up for Dun & Bradstreet? It is best to get your Dun & Bradstreet number, your Dun's number. Yes, absolutely. It's a good idea. But you don't necessarily have to sign up for their credit builder and buy their products. You can get the free number. So you got two items removed in your personal stuff, but they quote unquote stopped because their IDs didn't match the home address and so forth and so on. They want me to send a bill or something to address verification. Okay, this is a stall tactic that they utilize because they've already deleted two items for you. On your personal credit, they deleted two items and now they're saying, oh, well, hold up. Uh, we don't, we don't wanna do this and this, that, and the third. No, 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 no. You can send your updated utility bill to them, okay? along with your ID and your um, social. It's all good, you can do that. Now, you also can send them the rejection letter that says that you're outraged that they would try such a stall tactic because they already were able to identify who you were. They were already able to delete items. Now they're trying to play games and not do their jobs, right? So it's just nonsense. You can get these letters beyond committed package, 609creditrepair.com. We can do the work for you at the Awesome Life Group. All right. Perfect Body Beauty. I did get eight collections removed from listening to you. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Also, if you need any help, you have my email as well. Meza, great to see you again, sir. I went from 515 to 660 in 60 days with the Beyond Committed Package. Congratulations, Mike. I'm glad to see you back here as well. All right. My experience FICO? Okay. My experience FICO is already at 632, less than a month after the BK, the BK7 discharge. Congratulations. Drop the chalupa. <laughs> Congratulations. That's funny. Man. Can't wait to see where it goes next. Well, congratulations. I'm glad here to help and assist. And again, you have my email if you need anything. Five oh one C three nonprofit organization. Character nine. That's excellent. What do you what is that uh, that you're working on nonprofit wise? Um Reinvestigation, Mike, you're going to want to send them that demand reinvestigation letter as well. All right. If they're playing games, you've gotten some great results already. Now, it's, it's, it's how they do it. They want to push back and see, we'll get some deletions. Oh, we don't want to do it all. They try to keep you in this middle ground, trying to make money off you. They don't want scores to be too high. They want scores to be too low. Right. They want to help their customers, the banks and the credit card companies, maximize their returns so then they can make more money. It's a wicked game. So, Hey, we're going to get you to the other side. And you already, uh, this is what's beautiful is other subscribe tribe members come in here. They let people know it is possible. You can get to the other side and you can get those 700 credit scores. You may be next. Okay. All right. So you can send your inquiry just destiny asks about inquiry dispute letters. Hey, where do I send my inquiry dispute letters? You send your inquiry dispute letters to the credit bureaus and you can send them to the creditors who put them on there. Who, who put these erroneous items on there without your permissible purpose. This is the thing. They have to prove and show permissible purpose under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, Section 604, along with all the other, uh, along with everything else, okay, under uh, FCRA 1681, they've got to be able to provide proof, substantiate it, all right?
Greetings, Brian. Acquired Navy Federal Credit Union accounts. Excellent. Credit cards are next on the horizon. Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for direction. You're very welcome. Congratulations. All right. What was the name of the electronics vendor again? I didn't catch that. I'll put that in the thing. Um, new egg business, new egg business. I'll give this to you right now. And there are plenty of vendors that you might need that need to report. So, you know, we, we use different stuff. So we were using Dell uh, instead of like new egg. We were using Tiger Direct. Uh, we were using other stuff. So new eggs, make sure new egg works for you. Okay. What's up everybody? Big dog. How long does it take yep. to post the vendor accounts? Uh, 30 to 60 days typically. All right. I have Quill, Soma office, uh, supplies, Granger, T-Mobile and Verizon. Yeah. Verizon. Oh yeah. We have Verizon. We have Verizon for our internet. I forget about all the things. Uh, we have our leases, uh, a lot of stuff. You can do uh, most everything in your DUNS and EIN numbers. Uh, EIN number is is interesting because you can do the bank account EIN number and a lot of uh, your leases. If you're getting office stuff, you can do in the EIN. Okay. <laughs> I love a big dog is saying about to watch another one of your videos for TransUnion and just saw that as this was live. Whoa, awesome. Congrats. Thanks for jumping on here. All right. Um... I put a freeze on my Lexus Nexus in my stage stream. Will this stop me from getting a new credit card or personal loan? More than likely, no. More than likely, you are okay. You should be just fine. If for some reason there is an issue, um, they will either let you know they weren't able to get stuff or you'll know that's what it was, uh, but you should be fine. Yeah, that's not an issue. That's just not a big issue. All right. Which business vendor accounts would you suggest? Well, it does depend on what is necessary for you and what you uh, need for your business, you know, you might be on the road a lot and need a, a BP card or a Valero card or something like that. While we're more, a little bit more in the office, so we need more like Quill and we need more like, you know, Tiger Direct and New Egg Business. A lot of times it's going to be needed for you in your industry. So just, um, you know, take a look, see what vendors you need. We do a lot of postage, obviously. So Pitney Bowes has been very helpful to us. And it, it, it is. These vendor accounts are very helpful. Very, very helpful. Yes, El uh, Rel Cool J, El Rel El Real, almost like the real. Uh, yes, you can send your second round of letters. Uh, that is the process. Sometimes they want to play these games. Your credit score went up though, so credit score went up, but they're closing it. They're playing games. They're trying to get you to just leave them alone because they closed it. But no, you wanted this stuff to be removed, deleted, so you can send round two. Okay, and round two always asks their method of verification and pushes on them to really show that if they quote unquote did verify, how did they verify, okay? Yes, Newman, yes, you could send your next round. Yes, a bill, they will try and sell, send bill statements and sell them as if they're the real deal. Anyone can draft a statement. They definitely have to have something substantial to prove that it is yours indeed, okay? Cody, thank you so much, Cody Gras Graska. Brandon is awesome. Been watching him since September of last year. He knows his stuff. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm glad to see that you're a uh, continued subscribe tribe member here watching. I love you all very, very much. And I'm glad that we're here on this holiday weekend working with one another. So thank you so much for being here. As I know, some people probably go out of town during this period of time and whatnot um, and are busy. Okay. Oh, businessman, that's interesting. Uh, I have uh, some emails from individuals who have done that, and someone has left uh, a video. But I was, uh, you know, cautious about putting their information out there because that's, you know, some of their legal information. So um, yeah, I'll uh, look into it and reach out. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, I want to make sure that they they're comfortable with that type of legal uh, information, as obviously, you know, that is uh, pretty personal to them. Thank you. Wayne, report shows several addresses for, for, from at least 20 years and several phone numbers I had in the past. Shall I dispute to have only one good address, one phone number, and which one is current? I think I 
think you emailed me, Wayne, about this. Um, yeah, especially if they're attached to some old accounts that are still on there. I think we, that's what we're talking about. Uh, having one good updated address typically is your go-to, all right? Hi, Brandon. I've been binge watching your videos. Much success to you. Salute 100, Kevin. Kevin V. Freeman, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Oops, this jumps down. Hmm, 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 hmm. Sorry about that. It's a live chat sometimes. Do you suggest putting on good positive accounts like secure credit cards while fixing the erroneous information? Michael Jones. Hey, you know, uh, Blackbeard Dave is on here a lot and he has said for himself and other people have said as well that self lender has really helped them boost their score while putting on while going through their dispute process while putting on good credit you can go through the dispute process you can do both at the same time okay it's like building muscle and burning fat right get those negative nasty erroneous items off of there it's like burning fat and building muscles like building credit um so yes you definitely can do that i think whatever works best for you is uh, the right secret you know, formula for you because some individuals are like, hey man, you know, the My Jewelers Club card, the New Coast Direct work for me, but of course those come with, you know, purchasing something or maybe a, uh, an annual fee that might not be right for you. So you might want to go with like a self lender, something like that, okay? Hey, I just, uh, Diane, hey, I just got a new collector letter. I just got a new collector letter. What do I do next, okay? So I'm guessing this is a new collection that was put on there and you just got a letter from them. You can send your validation letter right to them okay you can send the validation letter right to them you can have them try to validate this stuff all right even if it's not on your reports just yet you if you're getting a letter from them you can send a letter back to them if it is on your reports you can also send your 609 dispute letter to them now if it's new and you've already sent some 609 dispute letters and you want to send um a, a new one right it's probably going to be around one one okay around one letter the reason being is because you put it in the right order, say verify it. And then number two, the round two would be like, well, how did you verify if they verify it, right? So you wanna make sure you're doing uh, your process, the due diligence and giving them uh, the enough legal wiggle room to kind of hang themselves, right? They, they, you give them enough rope to trip themselves up and trap themselves up, okay? Yes, Kid Flash, thank you very much for the super chat. Does ALG do? Uh, business credit, business funding, and hard inquiry disputes and removals. Who do I talk to? Yes, absolutely. Um, actually, Luke is standing by right now. Um, so let me give you, let's see, Kid Flush. That's right. That's right. I'm standing by on a holiday weekend on a Saturday. We're ready to rock and roll, okay? Michael Jones, okay. You can file your complaints. I wonder, was it the last live stream that you got? Yeah, I think it was the last live stream. Where well, it showed an individual file a complaint, CFPB, Better Business Bureau, Capital One came back from the Better Business Bureau complaint that said, hey, we're gonna remove all your late payments. We're sorry, we're, we're, uh, it might take you know, 30, 60 days to update. File your complaints, absolutely. Keep it tight, Jerome, get tight, get tight, Jerome. Get in here. Ah, King Nasu. This is an interesting question, all right? So I had a business account with Sprint, but it fell into collections. What do I do, fam? All right, so go, you can check out your business credit reports, nav.com, see if you have derogatory on there, and you actually can dispute that with the business side of the business bureaus, okay? It's a little bit different. Fair Credit Reporting Act regulates consumer side, okay? But since most people are not disputing their business stuff, it is a similar process and it may be a bit uh, simpler to see once you decipher uh, what's on your uh, accounts, okay? What's cool is if you have a business account, it's probably not on your personal 
side, right, King? So you probably don't have to worry about it. It's probably all on your business side. So you can get that knocked off of there if you are still using that business and want to boost that side and make sure your paid X score is all good and your uh, FICO small business score is all good and your, your business scores are all good. Yeah. So you can do that. Now, if it is on your personal side, you can dispute that. Or if it's not something that is on your reports and you want, you don't want to use Sprint, you can use Verizon or you can use T-Mobile, AT&T or something like that. That could be advisable too. It's about what you need and what you want to do, right? So you say, hey, you had one and fell in the collection. What do I do? Well, what would you like the outcome to be? What do you need? Do you need to use Sprint again? Do you need it off your reports? Are you still using that business? What else is going on? Okay. How do I, how can I obtain a line of credit that will report to my credit report? James, to your personal credit report? Because most all of the credit lines should post to your personal credit report if they're in your name, right? And if your credit is not strong yet and you need some, you know, trade lines, some credit lines like a New Coast Direct or my Jewelers Club card, those pretty much, you're good to go, right? Unless you have some active bankruptcy, which you probably don't. Those usually can get, okay? Now, if you're talking about business, all right? business credit card that posts to business uh, line of credit. Now they can use the vendors and the store cards, but v B of A actually reports to, I believe, uh, Experian uh, small business. Okay. I think they're putting stuff out there on the business credit card and they will actually report to your business, uh, the business side. Okay. Which is interesting. Now that one is at first a personal guarantee card. Uh, so that would be in your name. So you don't necessarily want to do that, but that is a way to do that without uh, having, you know, if you want to get a credit card, you don't necessarily need to do that because you can start with the vendors and the store cards and build up and then get a no personal guarantee card. Yeah. Can we uh, clean up, delete, dispute neg negative items from a business credit report? Yes. Business, my business credit repair is a possibility. We also, Hey, just for the VIPs on the holiday weekend, people watching, Watching now, watching the replay. Yes, ALG Business Credit. We in business to help you with your business credit repair as well. Okay, so yes, we can help you do that. All right, Ed, you can find that all in the Beyond Committed Package. Absolutely. All right, getting more questions. Apologize if I miss anything here. Sorry for typing as loud. All right. All right. Why do D and B want to talk to me about issuing me my DUN number? Ron Real, uh, did you contact them about getting a DUN number? Do you, do you, you register with them to get a DUN number? I don't know. How do I navigate my address with two businesses having using my home address? Okay, so we're on real. So you don't have um, offices or maybe like a place where you're doing business, like a kitchen or something like that, if it, yours is like catering or raw food or something, right? 
So how do I navigate my address? Well, if you're using a home address, you can start that way, but it's not going to look good to vendors long term. <clears throat> so the idea here is you potentially could look into a virtual address, something that's with these co work spaces, that kind of stuff. Okay. And you can utilize that address and you could always have your mail forwarded to you or pick up your mail or whatnot. Yeah. So that's a possibility. Now, with your addresses for two separate businesses, can you have um, two businesses with the same address? Potentially, yes, you could, yes, and different suite numbers, right? That kind of stuff uh, could be a bit more advantageous. But if you're starting out, you're like on a budget, you could use one virtual address for your businesses. Um, it would be more optimal to have one virtual address per each business. Yeah. Okay. Does MJC and my Julius Club card and New Coast Direct card count against Chase's 524 rule? Would you recommend getting just one or both? Currently have a self lender loan and a Capital One secured card. Bodyguard 856, are you looking to get a Chase credit card in the next 24 months? Okay. Typically, Chase has a rule that if you apply for more than five cards or lines of credit or have these five inquiries on your reports uh, in the last 24 months that they don't want to give you one of their premier cards, right? One of their good travel cards, one of their cards, one of the Chase's awesome cards. Now, not all, not all inquiries are created equal. Usually business credit inquiries, if they're going for funding, uh, business credit cards usually don't count. Certain credit cards uh, don't count, but for the most part, all other credit cards and inquiries count for Chase. Okay. Uh, so store cards would be part of them. And so Chase can be challenging, but if you're not going for that in the next 24 months, or you don't seem like you need it, uh, Amex is much more liberal with their point system and they're, you know, getting membership rewards points and being of value and having good, you know, all this stuff back and the cash back and the travel and all that stuff. Uh, when I was doing the travel miles and doing all these, these credit cards, which ultimately helps me get up into, you know, the 800s and whatnot. Uh, I also was under that Chase 524 rule and I, you know, didn't really utilize Chase. I think it's something that, uh, is, that must work for Chase and whatnot. If I was, you know, <laughs> the CEO of Chase, uh, I don't think that rule would be very useful to an organization to, that's trying to maximize returns and money. I, I don't see why exactly why they do it. But so be it. Maybe they figured things out that we don't know. But uh, if you're in the building process right now, bodyguard, chances are you're probably not going for a chase card at the moment. Yeah. So you want to um, think about, you know, what do you need that chase card for? What do you want? And can you get something that's comparable to that? Right. A venture capital one card, Amex platinum card, Amex gold card. Uh, what else is out there if you can't get the chase 524? Right. And, and if you do, then you go for that and work on that. But just make sure you get your credit in order. Yeah. Your credit, credit, what? Credit pair starts when? It starts now. That's right. Yes. I'll give you my email right now. Feel free to email me. I look forward to these emails. I look forward to helping. That's right, bodyguard said starts now. Prince, what about HSBC? Well, how do you, depends on what you want them for. You want to get a line of credit. HSBC can be fine, but, um, you know, I always like to get something back, percentage back, points back, right? If you can get up there, yeah. All right, let's see. All right, sorry, a couple... Yes, to my personal credit report. So James was looking for a credit line that uh, reported to his personal credit report. Currently have a self lender, nine open accounts, all positive, no lays, no collections, just trying to strengthen up my profile score. Thanks. Okay, well, it depends what your credit score is at, right? You can always go to uh, match tool and see which one you match up well with, yeah. Okay. 
You can always use a match tool. And on top of that, stuff that you want to apply for, you can call them. You can actually ask them. I've asked in the past when I was doing, trying to do, you know, these travel miles and all stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm interested in your credit card. I got a, this credit score. What do you think about that? I've called Capital One and Barclay and all sorts of people, and they'll let you know. They'll give you an honest uh, assessment, okay? All right, Rohan, um, Capital One put two inquiries on your on the same credit report, all right? One was after you applied for one, and then 30 days later, they just put it on another one on it again, okay? Uh, that's a duplicate, duplicate inquiry. You can dispute that duplicate unverified inquiry, right? Duplicate unverified inquiry without permissible purpose. They're not allowed to do that, right? So you send in your stuff to the bureaus and complain. I would say complain right out of the gate to CFPB and Better Business Bureau. They're not allowed to do that, okay? And if they feel like they uh, made a mistake or we're sorry or whatever, too, too bad, too bad. They need to take it off, right? You take it off immediately because that could be three or four or five points, 10 points, depending on how much it is. it gets weighted because you now it looks like you applied boom, boom, right, right after each other, okay? Businessman says, I use 609 dispute letters, removed Sprint and AT&T from TransUnion. Congratulations. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Raw, really? Yes, I registered online, but then someone called me for Dun & Bradstreet. Okay. Well, as long as you got your number, your D, your Dun's number from Dun & Bradstreet, they might be calling you to try to solicit to you uh, their business building software and all that stuff, try to help you build their business and make money. Okay. You can get the free, you can get the free, Dunn's number and you can be good to go. Okay. Can I get a gas card and security card to boost my score faster? Yes, you potentially can do that. Good credit is very helpful. Also make sure to keep your utilization down. Users around here would like to say, under 10%, yeah, it's gonna be your best bet. Uh, seven to 10%, 7% and below is the highest FICO earners. And 7%, uh, people that use three, at least three revolving uh, trade lines, keeping their utilization under 7%. At some point, at some point, not right out of the gate, I'm not saying right away, but at some point they have 12 credit cards with seven of them, at least seven of them being big bank cards, while the rest could be store cards. These are the highest FICO owners, the people that are getting in the 700s and the 800s. We have great uh, video here, great live stream on how to get an 800 credit score, how to get a 700 credit score, how to do these types of things along with getting the nasty, erroneous things off of there. Being able to build up and uh, utilize the right trade lines in the right way and the, getting the right stuff on there and doing it uh, to basically FICO spe specifications that they actually have on their website, which I, you know, that's why I invest in having the My FICO app to see what they say. Having the right credit history makes a huge difference. It can change your life. It has changed mine. It has been a, uh, a beacon, right, of, of change. And that's what I want to be here for you. I'm here for you. Uh, if you need help with this, make sure you email me. I'm putting my email in here again. All right. And if you want this negative, nasty, erroneous stuff off your reports, these unverified accounts, remember, 609creditrepair.com. Get that Beyond Committed package. We can also do the work for you at the awesomelifegroup.com. All right. Of course, you got the ALG business credit. If you want to look at the business credit building, with no personal guarantee or business credit funding, we help with business credit reports as well. Just putting negative, nasty, erroneous status on there. We're one stop shop for all your credit needs because credit repair starts when it starts now. That's right. Okay. So, again, Thank you for being here on this holiday weekend. We'll do a couple more few uh, questions and answers. We'll get through uh, as many as we possibly can, but I know that uh, many of you are probably doing some great things over the holiday weekend, so I don't want to take up too much of your time, but let's get back into it right now, okay? All right, uh, Cody, you need to clean the DAC reports uh, for driving semi trucks. Absolutely, okay. So, uh, Higher Right actually is a go to source for them. That is where you can look at. Let me actually pull this up for you. All 
a right hire, hire, hire right. Yeah. Uh, you can request a copy of your DAC report, the DAC report, and you can get this here. You can actually do it online. You can see what's on there. You can send in your dispute letters um, for this, for your stuff. Let's see. There you go. All right. Okay, do these companies respond with actual letters or postcards? I've been getting postcards describing the dispute process, but this sounds like a stall tactic, not actual response. Correct. So the bureaus will actually send you full these full pages reports um, of what was deleted. You'll get full responses. You'll get full pages, usually from collectors, uh, agencies saying, hey, we're looking into it. Oh, this was deleted. This was removed. This, we're going to request this to be taken off, that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, postcards, yeah, it's uh, they're saying, oh, the dispute process is happening. Wait in there. Yeah, it's all tactic, okay? If they don't respond to you 30 days from when you sent the letter, when they got the letters, they get the letters, 30 days later, they're supposed to postmark your response, okay? If that doesn't happen, we have the non-response letters that you can send out, all right? Well, we can do this on your behalf at the Awesome Life Group, okay? Yes, you can dispute late payments with success. Absolutely. We had an individual who was able to get all their late payments off of Capital One. They disputed. They used goodwill letters. They filed their complaints with the BBB. Uh, you're able to dispute non-unverified uh, late payments with the bureaus. We have seen it. I have seen it personally. My partners have seen it. We've seen it with people. It is possible. Absolutely. Okay. Quentin May, thank you so much. Brandon, your team is doing a good job with my credit. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here on the live stream, the live chat right now. If you're watching this replay at home, I appreciate you for watching and watching this long. Please uh, give a thumbs up if this video has helped you out. If you've gotten some uh, great value, please give this a thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe chat button. Hit that subscribe chat button, that bell for notifications. You can also jump on the thesubscribetribe.com. Okay, for the dates and times of when I go live. Yeah. And you'll know topics ahead of hand, ahead of time. You'll be able to get your questions answered by me. All right. And uh, Cody, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, Brandon. You're awesome. Thank you, Cody. You're awesome. I appreciate it. And uh, yes, that information is going to help you clean up that uh, DAC report and get you on the road uh, to recovery and actually get you on the road if you're truck driving your semi business and all that good stuff. Okay. How often you live chats, live streams. We usually up on the weekend, all right? But we're looking into doing some more, okay? Get the people uh, at least, at least, at least on the weekends here, all right? Welfare office, I got a 780 score. Congrats. How many primary trade lines should I have on my personal credit report to get higher credit lines? Interesting, all right? All right, so how do I hire credit lines? Well, primary lines of credit, okay? Like we talked about, the highest FICO earners, the people with the highest scores typically have 12 primary revolving accounts, seven of them, at least seven of them being big, big, big accounts, right? Or excuse me, big um, cards like the Amexes and the MasterCards and the banks, the Barclays and that kind of stuff. The other, uh, at least seven of them are that way. The rest could be store cards, but they could all be bank cards. Okay. So how do you get higher credit limits? Well, higher credit limits usually are from your score. Okay. Usually from, they ask you, you know, debt to income ratio. They ask you about, you know, what your utilization is at all these good things. Yeah. History, that kind of stuff. You can request credit line increases as you go along and have a relationship with them. Okay. Capital One, Discover, Amex, they're all willing to extend that to you as you are a good client for them. Okay, usually about six, nine months, somewhere in there, even up to a year, something like that. Okay, and you can request that as long as your score is good, you're looking good. It doesn't really, they're not really looking at all your primary trade lines. They're looking at 
your score, your utilization, your debt to income ratio, that kind of stuff, right? How have you been a client for them typically? Okay. And how does your credit score look? To get a strong credit score, more primary lines may might be helpful to you. But there are people who have been up in the 800s without having, you know, 12 lines of credit. It is possible. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then I'm not telling you to do that right away, but it is part of what FICO puts out. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, excellent. Now, unknown, okay, hold on one second. Unknown, what on earth is unknown? Okay. Oh, it sounds like unknown should be deleted. Okay, I thought it was someone in the chat. Uh, what does unknown mean or not reported or something like this? It's just they don't have data. So what's interesting is that uh, a lot of times credit card companies or collectors, they'll kind of fib. Right. They won't tell you the truth. They'll say everything has to be reported, has to be accurate. Not everything has to be reported. Everything that must be reported must be 100 percent accurate. OK. Prayers for all of us here in Florida. Oh, wow. Is there a hurricane? Is there a hurricane in Florida? Did I miss that? Is that what's going on, Blackbeard Dave? I'm sorry to hear that. And yes, prayers for Florida. Absolutely. Dorian, Hurricane Dorian. Yes. My thoughts and prayers are with Florida, and I'm sure the subscribe tribe as well. Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Absolutely. It's supposed to hit Monday. Hopefully, everything will be all right. Hi, Brandon. I got here late, but I'm late. Good to see you. Good to see you. Remove inquiries. Yes, you can um, send your letters all at the same time. Bureaus, the creditors, uh, any collector that might have looked into it, I doubt that. Um, and get that stuff off of there at the same time. Uh, that's going to be good along with filing your complaints. Okay. So it's holiday weekend. I hope you all enjoy your holiday weekend. Again, Hit the subscribe try button, all right? Hit that bell for notifications. 609creditpair.com, get the Beyond Committed Package. We can do the work for you at the theawesomelifegroup.com. And uh, if you have any great holiday plans, feel free to put them in here as well. I'm gonna probably try and take care of my dog and get to these emails, right? These bureaus, I don't sleep. Ain't no holidays for me, okay? So feel free to email me as well, all right? Okay. Any of your questions, concerns, anything that you might require, I appreciate you. All right. Yes, absolutely. Feel free. Excellent. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Let's see, maybe one more question here. I've been cap. I've been with Capital One for one year. Okay, business and personal. I recently sent out a credit line increase letter and got a letter saying credit bureau information is missing or unavailable. Can you help, Marvin? Pull your credit reports. Okay, yep. Pull your credit reports. See what's on there. See what's on there, and call Capital One for a credit line increase. Yeah, call them. See what's going on. 
they have the information sitting there, okay? You'll be able to find out what's going on, see what's on your reports. Also, I'll give you my email, okay? And see what's going on. Have you pulled your reports? Do you know what's going on with what they say is quote unquote missing, yeah? Because I bet this stuff is there because if you've been a Capital One member, uh, personal side and business side, sure enough, I'm sure they've reported all that information to you, okay? so. Again, have a wonderful holiday weekend, okay? I want you to enjoy, know that I'm here, ready to rock and roll with these emails, ready to rock and roll, put these, put this foot on the necks of these bureaus. Yes, we don't play no games, okay? Appreciate you, 609creditrepair.com. We can do the work for the awesome life group.com. Enjoy, thank you so very much. I love you all very much. The Subscribe Tribe has been wonderful and positive, and I look forward to every Saturday getting to do this. Until I see you in person, I will see you on the other side. Take care.